Hey everybody, hope you're doing alright. Slight change of scenery there today. I'm trying to set this up to see if we can give you a little better light. Always fun to get a cardboard box. Uh, this should be the Vortex Uh, Viper Vortex Viper PST Gen 2 1 to 6 with the VMR2 reticle that uses uh, uh, MOA. Here it is. Here's the box. Not much to look at there. Now, pardon the gloves. Uh, I'm evaluating different scopes and I'm going to buy one of them. I've got Three that are coming. This is for my lever gun, my 3030. Uh, and I, you know, when you spend hundreds of dollars on something that you want to last forever in this world of internet purchases, it is tough to, um, you know, make a good decision if you can't actually hold something and look through it. Uh, let's see what that is. We'll screw down. That might even be a sunshade on this thing. So I went ahead and ordered this, and I'm going to compare it against. Uh, this is one to six. I, that hunting rifle, I typically use it out to 200 yards. Um, really, what appealed to me about this Vortex is the true one X on the low end of the magnification. Uh, I also have a 2x8, which is a Vanguard product. I've used Vanguard scopes before and um, have been pleased with them. And the loop hold, um, they were sold out of the 3.5x10, but in the, in the hunter style that they have. Okay, you get these little uh, kind of rubber bandy bikini covers. They were sold out of the, the Hunter version in two in three and a half to ten, but they did have the tactical version in the three by nine. So I have narrowed down my selection on the scope to either this one to six, a two by eight, or a three to nine. I'm gonna look at all of them and then make a determination. First impressions, fit and finish on this thing is uh, exceptional. Um, it looks well made. I think they advertise it as matte. But in that particular light, it's a little bit on the glossy side. Uh, the, the, another determining factor in addition to the um, magnification available on these, I was a little concerned about having this small 24 millimeter objective, uh, particularly on that hunting rifle when I often hunt at dawn and dusk. Uh, I need my light gathering capabilities. Uh, that was, and the other consideration was really the weight. I think this is listed at about 23 ounces. Now that seven pound uh, lever gun, I was just a little concerned about putting, you know, a pound and a half on top of it and making it a little top heavy. When the whole idea of those guns is to be fast, maneuverable, and um, and easy to use. The glass on this thing is excellent. That's, I don't know if we'll be able to get you through the reticle there. If not, oh, there you go, you almost had it. Let's see, where is that? I had it for one second. Let's see if I get straight behind this thing, if I can help you guys out. What, there it is. Maybe what we'll try to do, and I'm pointing it right at something that's super close, so this may not be. There you go. There's uh, Frederick Remington right there. Super bright, crystal clear. It has the true 1X. Now that's on one. And when I look out the window, both eyes open. The only thing I would say is that I've got to be about uh, eye relief on this thing. I have to be just about, let's see where it starts to get tunnely on me. Yeah, the advertisement I think says about four to six inches of eye relief. The eye box isn't super, super um, 
forgiving, you do have to really be in that zone. If you start getting close, you'll get tunnel vision. Let's dial it up a little bit and see what she looks like. Vortex PST Gen 2. The glass is super crisp. Um, I might just have to keep more than one of these things, but the downside of that is that I'm going to have to buy another rifle. This thing is real stiff. Like really stiff. I don't know if I got a throw lever included in it, but it will be hard to um, adjust this thing quickly. Okay, we're cranking her up now. Now we're at four. Let's imagine where I would have most of my shots set. Reticle's crystal clear, glass is still crystal clear. Let's go up a little bit more. This one goes to six, so... And I would have to adjust the diopter too because it is not... Um, let's see if it locks. Because I'm a little bit out of focus at, at six. Now you might get... Yeah, this thing has edge-to-edge -edge clarity. What I'm going to do is take it down, take it out back, and there's a bird feeder that's set up at 100 yards. Uh, we can use that bird feeder basically as a proxy for a uh, vital zone of a deer. We'll put this on it and see how we feel about taking that 100 yard shot. Um, we should probably be able to take it on 1x, but let's get you out there with the, um, with the, Okay, we're going to take you out back and try to put this on a bird size, uh, birdhouse target at 100 yards, and I'll see if I can get you through the reticle. Show you what it looks like. All right, took you outside. Uh, this is the hill and back. We're going to zoom in. You see that uh, saucer swing right there. I'm going to try to get you a little higher. On the center on that tree, right next to that saucer swing, is a bird feeder. See that? Get you a little higher. There we go. If it'll sit right there, that'd be great. So we're zoomed in on the bird feeder. That's 100 yards away. So we'll get you a little bit more centered, and then I'll see if I can get you through this uh, reticle, through the eyepiece here and we'll see what it looks like I'm at one and I see no aberration whatsoever uh, between my eye and the view See if I can get you guys on that. Uh, oh, I wiggled it. Kind of difficult trying to line all these up, so sorry for the trouble. Oh, there it is right there. That's your 1X. Clear as day. You see that horizon line goes right across. It's, it looks real nice. We'll take it up to 4X. Same thing, it's looking real good. This is 4X, Let's see if we can get you through it. You get a little touch here, there. That's a 4X view. This probably isn't the best way to, for you guys to see this, but it's super, super duper clear. And now it's six. At six, the eye box is real, real touchy. I mean, you gotta be right in that zone, but it's right on the money. It looks really good. It's letting in light, plenty of light. It's really crisp. Looks good. Okay, so uh, we checked it out. I, I don't know how well you were able to see through that. It's kind of difficult to line it up. At, um, 
When you're up at six, the eye box isn't super duper forgiving. Uh, at one, it's good. The glass is crystal clear at all level levels. Um, I didn't really have any type of fisheye effect. Fit and finish is exceptional. It doesn't feel that heavy, frankly. It feels pretty light. I won't be able to do any type of tracking tests um, with it because I can't mount it. Um, I've got to make a decision without ever actually getting this on top of a gun, but I did want to at least feel it and look through it. It's difficult to make uh, decisions about optics when you can't touch it, look through it, take it outside. It is uh, about 8.30, 9 in the morning, a uh, cloudy day, so maybe I'll try to get this thing out there again at dusk and, and see what it looks like. But first impressions, I'm pretty impressed. It is well made, it is sleek, simple operation, good design, feels nice. Um, they took you know some care in, in the thought process um, I like it when products feel like they were designed with some intention, and this certainly feels um, that way. Um, again, I may end up having to keep two of these things, put one on my 3030, and then um, buy another gun for the other one. Um, I was kind of—I've been thinking about a 22250. I like those fast rounds, those flat trajectory rounds. You do get the little scope bikini thing. Uh, a little bag in here, some other assorted uh, goodies, and that's really it. Um, you know, you can find these things on sale at the time of this writing. They're between five, six hundred dollars, I think. When they originally came out, they listed for um, eight ninety nine. I, I have not, I don't have a razor to compare it with, but I would. It's hard for me to think that basically for twice the amount of money that this is to get up into the razor category. Um, you would have to spend twice as much money. I don't know if this would be twice as good. Um, I have a sneaky suspicion that it, it, it would be better, but I don't know if it would be 2x better. And that's what you're going to have to pay to go up that level of glass. So those are the first impressions. We'll look through that 2 by 8 and see what we think. And then we'll also look at that loophole um, three by nine, that may be where I land just because I get that extra bit of magnification on the high end. So you couldn't, you won't be disappointed if you order this scope and it comes in your mailbox, that's for sure. It is a good looking scope. It feels well made, well constructed. The glass is crystal clear. Um, everything about it is ergonomically correct. Uh, they, they really thought about what they were doing with this. So if you're in the market for a uh, LPVO, and you want one with the true 1x that's kind of why I wanted this for that 3030 is with the true 1x I can kind of use it like a red dot but I still have the capability to exercise uh, to use some magnification so we'll look through the other ones and, and see what we think and then uh, I think I got a hog hunting trip coming up next weekend um, who knows maybe we'll be able to get this in the field and show you what happens if we um, see some animals so thanks for watching if you like this uh, or it helped you a little bit make a decision, informed decision, please like the video and take time to subscribe to the channel. It helps me and it helps me keep these coming to you. I'm trying to get this YouTube thing going and I really appreciate you being here and um, have a great day. Bye.